So when you hear a preacher say, if you are hooked up on pornography, <laughs> continue watching, but keep coming to church. Don't struggle not to stop the porn. Don't struggle at all. Don't struggle. Just keep watching the porn. He works for Satan. You can't say it, but I'm called to say it. He's in league with the prince, with Bezebub. It's Global Baba. Sir, how can someone stop pornography and what would be your advice for someone who wants to get uh, rid of it totally go get yourself soaked in the world brother that's right we all with open face beholding the glory of god as in a mirror we are changed into that same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of god i said don't struggle not to stop the porn don't struggle at all don't struggle just keep watching the porn but as you're watching the porn spend more time hearing the word spend more times if you watch the porn one hour spend three four hours just listening to the word of god take notes go get all my teachings on christ just keep learning and learning and learning after a while you find out that your appetite for the porn is dying and your appetite for the word of god is growing before you know it you when when you even see porn you will be irritated because the word of god will kill that appetite completely and give you healthy appetites that's what to do don't try not to in fact just keep watching but develop more time spend more time studying god's word you find out that before you know it desire for porn will be gone that's what to do he works for satan you can't say it but i'm called to say it he's in league with the prince with bezebub because you need to know the reason for which jesus came have you read the scripture that says, for this purpose the son of man was made manifest why that he might do what even though works is in plural if you read that scripture in context what he calls the works of the devil is sin so it means sin should reign as long as jesus has not come the evidence that jesus has come to your life has come to my life is that sin cannot reign that's the proof that the son of man was made manifest that's the proof that he was made manifest when i'm 89 90 i will i will raise my right hand and say if there's any woman i touched in my pilgrimage because i know how much I, how long i will live the woman should disgrace me the proof that i did not touch any woman eh? what that is saying is that jesus came to me the son of man was manifested to me and the proof is that i lived above sin are you there pastoring is a burden the people that listen to you will see you on the other side of this divide when i stand on the island of light I need to see you there so even after preaching to you now when i i bought the plane for 11 hours i'll be praying for you because there's an aspect of your formation that is dependent on travel not just preaching a professional preacher just comes and he talks to people a messenger after talking to them he will go to mount horeb and he will spread his legs for seven units of prayer so that christ is found in them. and only god knows the effort that is done behind the scene what people see is the pulpit and holding of the microphone whenever there is transformation in the life of men there is a midwife of, of prayer a prayer midwife fulfilled his duties people don't just transform they respond to the effect of the midwife the midwife preaches and that's 10 percent of his work of midwifery then he prays after preaching because elijah came and prophesied for 29 seconds there shall be no rain there shall be no dew but according to my word for 29 seconds in order for that word to be consolidated he had to climb the mountain and the way he was praying is the way jewish women those days the posture that they sustain if they want to deliver 
travail travail and as he was traveling he told his servant they has it go check the sky what i'm giving birth to here will appear in the canvas of the sky and did not appear until he had delivered seven units and his servant came and told him i have seen a cloud that is in the likeness of a hand that means in that delivery process is the hand that is coming out first the fivefold ministries will now come out and become distinct and evangelist is pastoring the hand has not come out he's squandering the resources in the wrong place he's doing crusade every sunday morning jumping nobody will be established <laughs> he doesn't have the grace to do it the hand has not yet appeared a prophet can only see how a football match will end and who will be president ah uh, the hand is still stuck it has not yet it has not happened when you when you leave this service today go and take inventory of everybody that calls himself an apostle including me put me on that list and analyze are you there an apostle must be an establisher of doctrine his dialect must be doctrine if that's not the case an apostle must be able to model the christ life which is an indication of, of the fact that he's a friend of jesus an apostle must have deep encounters encounters that are so deep that he shapes his soul go and run your analysis there are many hirelings in the african church few messengers but the day of the tribe of truth it arises from the horizon darkness has a short time to di display its antiques because saviors will come from Zion. Brad, this, this man says, I don't want you to be ignorant. It's actually the labor of the saints. Whether or not the saints are equipped to do ministry is dependent on the kind of menu that they are served. So it is, it is pastoral tyranny to put people in perpetual infantile state so that the pastor can think he's a champion that's a failure in ministry so the kind of thing we run in africa and call ministry is not apostolic it is a game of trick of stars it's a game of stars not ministry when people deceive you i'm old enough to come and tell you i have <laughs> that road will lead you to the valley of the shadow of death Meanwhile, that is the role of a prophet in a generation. When God raises a prophetic voice, one of the things you, he will deal with you to become, you become fearless in speaking the truth. Because a generation that has turned his heart from God will not like a truth speaker. It's a risk to speak the truth because every hand will be pointing in your direction. Especially when the house is a rebellious house. I don't do what I do because there's something I want to gain. No. No. I don't do what I do because there's something I'm hoping that will come. No. I was sent. The one that sent me is the one I want to please. If by any means, apart from delivering my message, maybe someone gives me a fat envelope, right? that is incidental eh? i wasn't expecting it the only thing i was expecting was enough grace to deliver the errand if anything becomes a consequence of that that is positive it was not part of the deal are you doing that's why i'm here this is paul there are so many things paul could allow the believers to forget there were so many things he could condone if they did not know and there were other things that he would not want them to forget and this is one of them are you there i can show you seven things that paul didn't want the brethren to forget 
you know the reason why I'm hard with you if your spiritual coach is not a bit hard you'll be spoiled I'm not wicked I'm just hard if I allow you you become lascivious you'll be sinning as a hobby and you think somebody should congratulate you because you're sinning your coach needs to be hard to insist that you walk righteously when you grow into maturity you will thank me the question says what do i do when i have a call of god and i'm falling into the scene of fornication yes um the sin of see, the sin of fornication is a very serious sin and i tell you why because it's a law that works on your inside if you read the book of romans chapter 7 and chapter 8 you'll find three laws mentioned there the first law is called the law of the mind or the law of god and paul said that law is what pushes you to want to please god but he said there is another law called the law of the members or the law of your body or the law of sin and death he said that law negates the law of the mind or the law of god but in chapter 8 verse 2 he now introduced a third law he said the law of the spirit of life that is in christ jesus that's the law that destroys the law of sin and death so that the law of the mind can work when a man falls into sin like the sin of fornication he may think he didn't choose well he may think it's a weakness what he doesn't know is that it's a law at work mm. the first thing that you must do is to ask the holy spirit to activate the law of life that is in christ jesus mm. and the way the holy ghost activates it is in romans 8 5 and 6 he makes you to become spiritually minded because a spiritual mindedness that activates that law this is where the holy ghost will begin to give you encounters or expose you to ministers that carry the word of truth and the more they build spiritual mindedness the more you see that the law of life is strong on your inside that law is where you get your first victory so if you fall to sin what you need is the activation of the law of life the spirit of life that is in christ jesus number two you need to have an accountability structure so that you don't deceive yourself sometimes people call me from mina from ibadan and say oh i i fornicated please sir what do i do i say where's your pastor why are you calling a man who doesn't know you in abuja to tell him because he doesn't want to be accountable he just wants somebody to tell him it's okay the lord forgive you go back and sin no more but he will sin again what you do is to go and tell somebody who knows you who you respect and who can demand make demand of you and tell him i have fallen this is what i have done so that that person can either create a structure around your spiritual life to guide you and then once in a while the person will be asking you questions what are you doing have you cut off that relationship that's an accountability structure is the second guarantee that you will not fall again your life and trace why you fail it could be pride it could be worldliness it could be unnecessary desires and it will put you in a service place that will tame that thing that is where you find weakness especially immorality don't come and say huh, we are not strong so let's not see ourselves for one week <laughs> you'll be shocked you'll chat that person again if a lady is around you or a boy is around you and every three months you fall into sin go and tell that person your life your presence is destroying my destiny let him be offended and then you delete the numbers and you don't see again most likely you will be delivered and you will stay delivered there are many ways of tarrying of course prayer is one of it you can also tarry in the place of study you can gather materials in a particular sphere of knowledge that you feel you have deficiency and just read through paul speaking in first timothy 4 13 he said until i come give attendance to reading to exhortation and to doctrine he said give thyself wholly to these things that your profiting may be made manifest to all sometimes we are not praying we are just reading because as you read it has a mental effect and it has a spiritual impact when you read the thoughts of god enters your spirit and energizes you and then when you also read the mind of god the wisdom of god stretches your own understanding so that you become better upgraded for your destiny so reading is one way of tarrying another way of tarrying is by worshiping 
So you can be in your closet all day and you are just singing and worshipping God. If you don't know too many songs, you can play songs of anointed minstrels and while you are, they are worshipping, you are worshipping along and you discover that your spirit becomes supercharged. You can also tarry by staying quiet in God's presence. There are times when we just go lie down in God's presence and we are just focusing our minds on God. Focusing our emotions on God. And we are just quiet there. In Habakkuk 2 verse 1, he said, I will stand on my watch and see to see to and, and wait to see what he will say to me. And he said, Write the vision. So he was just there waiting for God to speak. He wasn't talking, he was waiting. So you can stay with God quietly. You know, it is youthfulness sometimes that makes us feel anytime we are tarrying, we must be speaking in tongues and not pause and not breathe. You know, as a younger Christian, sometimes you feel if you're even speaking in tongues and you pause and breathe you will break the frequency of God. So it's... No. Sometimes that itself becomes a distraction. There are times when you are just in God's presence for over four hours. You can say one word, thank you, Father. And you are just there. And you find the weight of glory descending on you. So there are many ways to tarry. You can tarry by staying with the saints. You can come to a gathering where believers are just there and they are talking. And as they are talking, the witness of God is overlapping, overlapping. And you discover a lot will happen. The Bible said in Malachi 3, I think verse 16 and 17, it said, they that fear the Lord, they speak one to another. A book of remembrance was written for them. So we can gather together and we are just talking about spiritual things. You may not even be participating. But as you are hearing people talk, 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 like Pastor Pojo and Pastor Femi were talking here, you see that your spirit man was gaining some level of charge. That's also a type of tarrying. This question says, how do you overcome laziness or fear of weight of one's mandate? Great. Um, that's also very important. Usually when the spirit of heaviness comes upon you, what we will call laziness, um, it will be very difficult for you to bring yourself out of it. So the first thing to do is to be helped. If I'm lying on the floor, it will be easier for somebody to pull me up than for me to stand up. I'll spend more energy to stand than for someone to pull me up. So if you see that you have become lazy and heavy, the first thing to do is to seek kindling and recharge from somebody else who is burning. And so you can attend a revival conference, you can listen to a sermon, just make sure you open your spirit to people who are already standing and burning. And what will happen is that they are charged will contact you and charge you up. That's the first way to go. And then the second thing to go to do is to talk to God. The Holy Spirit is your helper. The Bible said he will send you another comforter of the same kind. One of the synonyms for the word comforter is helper. Another one is standby. Another one is strengthener. So when you are weak, you can tell the Holy Ghost, I am weak. Please strengthen me. Please help me. As you begin to ask the Holy Ghost, you'll see that the Holy Ghost can literally energize you or he will create channels for you to be energized. So these are two simple, basic ways of coming out of it. And then the last one I will add is, get a mentor. Get a coach. I wanted to start gymming because I felt my, my, my physique, my strength, my energy was low physically. I bought a bicycle, static bicycle in the house. I bought a treadmill. I, I used it the first time they mounted it. And I didn't climb that in again for three months. In fact, the trade me was in my bedroom. But I wake up, look at it. I never used it. Until I had to get a coach. So the coach comes to the house in the morning, 8 o'clock. Sir, let's move, let's move. Ah, sometimes I rush. I was praying. I will go and quickly wear my gym wear. And he will drag me to the gym. And he kept taking me through that routine. After a while, I noticed that... My some things were <laughs> I wore my suit and he stood in a certain way. I said, yeah. Something is happening. <laughs> that was the first time I became consistent in exercise and Jimmy for three weeks because a coach came. Wow. You know. Although sometimes he comes, I, I, I leave him a message that today he can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> but he will come back the next day and still encourage me. <laughs> so get a mentor, get a coach. They will help you to push up and you overcome it. Thank you very much. So carnality is in levels. When God was teaching me about carnality, you will now discover that 
in the three dimensions of carnality. Can I say it? Ah, uh, there is a carnal man or a carnal nature. Write it down. In the three dimensions of carnality, there is a carnal nature. Now, the carnal nature is the one that binds a Christian. You know you love God so much, but there's another law that is operating in your body. That law is a nature that your body is now accustomed to. So you know you want to read Bible. You should be reading Bible, but you end up watching film. Because your carnal nature is stronger than your, the life of God within you. And that is because a lot of us allow the carnal nature to swallow us. So like Paul, Paul, he said, the things I want to do, I cannot do it. The things I hate, meaning these people genuinely hate that sin. They are not playing around. They hate the sin they see themselves practicing. They hate it with passion. He said, the things I hate, that is what I do. Why? Because the standard law within the members of his body is in nature. So many Christians, when their spirit is saved and their mind is delivered, their body still needs to be delivered from the carnal nature. And you see, you can only modify yourself or deliver your body from the carnal nature by killing the deeds of the body. And it's a painful task. You will have to pick your members of your body and modify them. If it's your eye that causes you to sin, Jesus said, cut it off. So you isolate it and mortify it until it dies. I've seen Christians who genuinely love God, but they, all, they keep falling into fornication. That man loves Jesus, but there's a nature. That nature, he's fornicating, he's crying after it. He's not faking it, but there's a nature he has not mastered. You see, so that nature makes him a slave to sin. So he's no longer a sinner, he's a slave. You see, a slave does not like the fact that he's enslaved, but he has no power over his master. So that is why it's only by God, by the Holy Spirit, and by walking in the Spirit, that a man can overcome his carnal nature. Walking in the Spirit meaning doing the things of the Spirit. And when Satan wants to make your carnal nature strong, what he does is that he isolates you from the things of the Spirit. So something begins to tell you, you don't need to go to church. You can also serve God in your house. Ah, it's an isolation center for your destruction. Something begins to tell you, oh, it's not about praying uh, so long. It's not about all those things. Ah, sir, an isolation center has been created for you. <laughs> isolation center has been created. So it's a nature. And this nature fights the believer, a lot of believers. There is a nature within them that refuses to respond to God. There is a nature within them that refuses to respond to God. And it seems as though anytime you want to make kingdom advancement, that nature will come. You see, that nature is a trap. It's keeping you from being ascended. Because the only time your Christianity can begin to make impact is when you are ascended. What the Bible calls being full of the Spirit. So it keeps you from gauging full. So anytime you want to rise to a level, it comes and you go down again. Because Satan knows he cannot stop your love for God. So it keeps you in a point where you are not useful to the things of God. So you spend your whole life repenting of one sin for 20 years. You want to advance. Say that we tell you that uh, remember you are still battling with this sin. Then it kills your zeal for God. It kills you. The canon nature is a limiter that Satan puts on the son of God. He puts on the daughter of God to keep you on the spot spiritually. A lady cried to me one day. She had a weakness. Fornication. She cried. You could know this person hate it. See, but there is a nature. And most of the times when God wants to make a man a great vessel, a woman a great vessel, Satan will put a tongue. But see, this tongue can be broken. 
when a man begins to walk in the spirit because the strength of the carnal nature is, is, is in the deeds of the flesh the same you that fall for certain sin do you not know that there are certain sins you don't even think about you don't even know they exist meanwhile those sins someone else is dying from it he's crying to God God help me from this sin yet you are existing without it it's, uh, it's because something has found a place to enslave you. So that sin is a limiter. It keeps you down. So that is the kind of nature that fights the Christian. The laws of sin within their body. And it can only be modified when a man begins to bring himself to light. Always going to church. You fall today. Don't, don't go to the isolation center of Satan. Because he wants to isolate you for destruction. So you say... Oh, I fall, so I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. Ah, is a, that thing you are sowing to cover yourself cannot cover you. Only God can cover you. So the first degree of carnality is the carnal nature. The second degree is the carnal mind. Now this one is the one that holds a sin abound. They don't just have the nature of sin; they have the mind of sin. So they are totally alienated from the kingdom of God. Those ones can never respond to God. And because of their carnal mind, they are conformed to the things of this world. So what they need is salvation and mind transformation. Because the God of this world has blinded their eyes so they can never discern the things of the spirit. So that is a carnal mind. That man is an expression of carnality in his highest form because it has conquered his spirit, soul and body if he wakes up if you have money now you think of God if he has money he thinks of himself he has a carnal mind and a man can be going to church and yet have a carnal mind that is why they cannot hear the voice of God in the preachings of the men of God so there is a carnal mind then there is what we call the things of the world Another level of carnality. Someone can be on fire for God, but he loves the things of this world. He loves the things of this world. So that kind of person will be perpetually distracted. Love not the world, neither the things of this world. You see, that thing called love is only, is, is only it should be only shared between you and your God. So, he's not telling you not to have the things of this world, but don't let them rule you. As I am, my pastors, they know my team, money does not rule me. If our money is church, program, I'm, it's God. I, it's God I'm spending on. When you don't gain your value from physical things, you've conquered it. That was I was speaking about giving. You, you, God cannot take ordinary material things from you. How can no one that cannot take your life? So if you say, God, I give you my heart, He knows you are, you, you are, you are, you are just, you are overcome by emotion. See, these are the lot of the people who think they are wise in their own eyes. They are wise men. They think they can play God. You discover that from the internal standpoint, you are laboring for another man to take. What is your house? What is your car? I had a very sweet car. What millions? God said, do program and sell your car. So my friend was telling me, no, I sold it off immediately. To See, you are not tied. You are not governed by these things. My what is not in what I drive. My oh my god, I, I carry a system within me. Hey, do you know what it means to carry a system within you? That was why, when Jesus sent his disciples, he didn't need to give them money. Today, they want to send you to a place. You say, Oh, the church should support you, they should rent house for you. They should, hey, 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 hey. your appearance in that city is an appearance of life. In this video, Dr. Abe Damina explained that the solution to being free from addiction is to continue in it. 
So according to his words, according to his words, just as we've just watched it, he explained that if a person is in a situation of pornography, someone that's addicted to pornography, he said the solution is to keep on watching it, is to keep on doing that thing. I think this is very wrong and is against the scripture. The solution to, to, to pornography can never be that you should keep on watching it. No. Addiction is a very serious thing. It's a very serious thing. And that is why we also added um, Apostle Arumes, Apostle Oropos videos and Prophet Joel Ogibe's videos. So that for adventure, they are anyone that are struggling from addiction, those videos will help. Because addiction is not just about um, pornography and um, masturbation alone. Addiction is in different forms. Laziness is an addiction. So the fact that you are addicted and you should continue doing that same thing and that means that you'll be free. I don't think that is correct. That is very wrong. It's not possible. It's not possible. Because one thing about addiction is that the more you do it, the more you fall into it. The more you get deeper into it. That is the secret about it. Once you start, that is why parents, that is why when, when you meet some experts, they do advise parents not to, to, to watch over children. They do advise youths not to have sex at an early stage. Because it can be addictive. It can be addictive. Once you start doing it, you may not stop. You want to you want to stop. So how can you say when well, to, to be free from such a thing, the solution is to keep on doing it? It's not possible. It's not possible. It's just not possible. So no one is condemning anybody here. No one is trying to condemn or blaspheme anybody here. But we're just saying the main truth that the solution to addiction is surely not going deep into it. No, that is not the solution. The solution might be something else, but the solution to it is surely not continuing in it. You can't be in addiction. You can't be addicted to pornography and keep on watching the same pornography and you expect to be free. It's not possible. It's not possible. So, Dr. A. Bed, I mean, a statement that to be free from addiction is to keep on doing it is totally wrong. That is totally wrong. I think that the best solution, according to my own understanding, I think that, in my own honest opinion, the number one solution to being free from addiction of any sort, from addiction, maybe addiction of fornication, maybe pornography, Maybe laziness, maybe cigarettes, maybe drinking, addiction of any sort. In fact, phone can be addiction. I believe and I, I think that the best solution is to come straight to God, to come clean to God, your maker. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, that is it. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and come to me and call upon me. He said, he will arise. He said, he will arise. So I think the solution is to come clean to God. Is to come clean to your maker. It is the person, it is a maker of something that knows how to repair it. If, if, if Toyota, Toyota brand can know how to repair, can know how to repair Mercedes Benz car. It's not possible. Because they are the one that created it. So it is Mercedes Benz maker that we know exactly what to do to correct any issues in the car. It is a maker that we know exactly what to do to change someone's life. So it is God Almighty that created you to this in this earth that knows exactly what to do that will stop that thing in your life. Yes. So I think that the best thing for someone passing through any form of addiction of any sort is to come clean to God. Come straight to your maker. Lord, this is who I am. Help me. Touch me. It is it's a matter of being humble and coming straight, coming clean to him to just help you. You have it it means that you have come to a point whereby you you don't want to live your life on your own anymore. You have come to a point whereby you want him to intervene in your matter. 
it means that you are tired of that situation and you want him to intervene so the i think the best solution is to come humble the bible says the humble he will not despise the humble the broken hearted he will not despise so coming clean to him coming clean coming straight to him in an humble manner lord this is who i am i am tired of this situation i am tired of this pornography help me what should i do i think this is the best solution and the lord will prescribe a suitable and a perfect solution that will bring other person from that thing because he is the one that created that person so he knows the exact solution to every problem that the person be passing through the lord knows the lord knows the exact thing he knows the exact solution for every of our problems so i believe and i think that the best solution to addiction is coming clean to god if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and come to me, I will arise from heaven and forgive their sin. God bless you.